the only thing we did find that could find that, that could that could uh, back up the cancer and the congenital disease mm. was uranium. <laughs> So we did find uranium. We were looking for uranium, we found and uranium. We find and the levels of uranium were about three times higher than controls in Israel uh, and about six times higher than controls from Sweden. Oh. So the normal Swedish population concentration of uranium in hair is one-sixth of the population concentration in Fallujah in the mothers of these children with congenital disease. Uh, and then we did something quite clever, which was to look along the length of the hair, because uh, the, the, the way in which um, material in the body is excreted is, in th is through the urine, but it also excreted into the hair. And so the hair grows at a particular rate. It grows at about one centimeter every month. And we had some women with very long hair, because these are Muslims and they don't tend to cut their hair. So, so we had one woman whose hair was 80 centimeters long. Oh. So that took us 80 months back into the past. Oh. And we looked at the end of her hair. And so what we were able to show was that the concentration of uranium in the hair went up as time went backwards. So it, was, it wasn't steady. It yeah. wasn't uniform. So it wasn't something to do with the environment. Yeah. It was something that was, that was very high in the past and was getting lower. Yeah. <coughs> so that is also very important. And in fact, the levels... In, in the hair, in, the, uh, in this woman, this 80 centimeter hair woman, which took us back to 2005, mm. were probably about 10 times higher. So instead of six times higher than Sweden, they're now 60 times higher than Sweden. Mm. So we have found a lot of uranium in the mm. hair, and it also goes up as you go back in time. But then the most interesting thing about it was that when we looked at the isotopic ratio, we found that it was slightly enriched, that it wasn't depleted uranium. Everybody's expecting depleted uranium. There wasn't depleted mm. uranium. We also looked at soil samples, and we looked at water samples from the Euphrates, from tap water, and from um, wells, two wells that were there. We were limited. We'd, I'd have liked to have looked at a lot more, but we were limited for money, you see, because each sample you send costs you another 130 euros, mm. uh, you know. So um, we found small amounts of enriched uranium in the, in the soil, mm. but not okay. very high amounts. So, so all of these things taken together yeah. point to the existence of a weapon that was used and in the Battle of Fallujah, which was some kind of anti-personnel mm. weapon and a new weapon, and they either produced enriched uranium or it used slightly enriched uranium. And so this is the cause, we feel, yeah. of these increases in congenital malformation. Now, the point is that some people have said, oh, well, you don't really know that there is an increase in congenital malformation because our original, our original paper only looked at cancer and uh, infant mortality. And although the infant mortality was high, of course you can die from, uh, as a mm. baby for all so from all sorts of diseases. It doesn't have to be a congenital disease. So the third study, which hasn't been published yet, which was rejected by The Lancet and a few other journals, uh, what that did was it followed uh, one paediatric clinic in Fallujah General Hospital and we asked the doctor there, who's one of my co uh, collaborators, mm. uh, to write down each one of the congenital malformations that she ha had to deal with uh, in the hospital and, and, uh, and also write down the number of births that this came from. Mm. And so this way we could find out the specific types of congenital malformation. It wasn't just like congenital malformation. We could say heart, de heart defects or, or neural tube defects mm. or kidney defects or childhood cancer or, or various types, classes. And on the basis of that, we were able to compare it with uh, controlled populations. And, and it was quite clear that the levels were between four times and ten times what we would have expected, mm. even allowing for consanguinity. Oh. So we allowed for that, we, we controlled for uh, using Pakistan and, and other uh, Arab countries. Where, you, where they marry their cousins. If you marry your cousin, you're going to get inbreeding um, genetic malformations mm, yes. because of the expression of these uh, um, normally silent genes, these recessive genes. Um, and so we controlled for that. So even given that, we had up to eight to ten times the levels of congenital malformation. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, we have actually nailed the entire thing. We, we, oh. have, we have proved that there is a level of genetic damage, genomic damage. We've proved that, they, that the, all the people who are talking about increases in cancer and congenital malformation are all right. Yes. And we have shown that the cause, almost certainly, is, is enriched uranium. Of course, we cannot rule out the possibility that there's something we haven't thought about. Okay. There might have been some kind of uh, 
chemical perhaps yeah. that was used and uh, that, that was extremely uh, powerful gen genotoxic chemical but actually I don't think that that is possible all of these pieces of evidence point to 2004 mm. Mm. so the question is why is it that we still have these high levels of yes. congenital malformation mm. now all chemical mutagens that I know about mm. are, 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 are substances which occur and produce an effect and then they're gone mm. you know but this, whatever it is that's producing this, hasn't gone. Mm. It's still there. No, it's still there. And no. and the levels of congenital malformation still are very high, mm. and so are the levels of of, uh, of cancer. So, yeah. uh, I mean, the cancer you can explain, but not the congenital malformation. So something yeah. is causing that still. Yeah. And that's hard to explain on the basis of chemicals. It is a war crime to use weapons with long-term disastrous effects on people's health. This is one of the many U.S. war crimes committed in Iraq. People will suffer from it for generations to come. This weapon should be banned. These occupiers have intentionally destroyed the Iraqi state's institution, historical and cultural heritage. More than one million people have died because of the occupations since the U.S. British coalition attacked Iraq. We want the world to know about this and support the demand that war criminals should be prosecuted. However, we will try to manage with it. They might be presidents, prime ministers, and whoever they are, they should be prosecuted for their crimes. And we also want Sweden to act more and better. Sweden has not been very good at these questions. Thank you.